everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we're gonna to be continuing with part seven of our how to build a Ford 302. Today's video is gonna focus on putting the valve train together. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and thank our sponsor, Summit Racing. They've sent over some absolutely amazing parts and they've been a tremendously gracious sponsor to work with on this build. This build would not be happening without them. Thank you so much, Summit Racing, and you can thank them by getting all your speed parts from summitracing.com. So like I said, today we're gonna to be putting the valve train together on our 302 or 347 in our case. It is something that needs to be done with a decent amount of precision and a decent amount of diligence. You have to really stay on top of everything and make sure you do all the steps in exactly the right order or else your valve train won't be put together correctly and you're gonna to have to redo it. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. So now we're gonna move on to installing our lifters. Our lifters for today are made by Summit Racing, sent over by Summit Racing, and the link is down below in the description. Now, I've already had all 16 of them removed out of their boxes and have them soaking in some engine oil. And you wanna do this for ideally about 24 hours before you plan on installing them. That way all the air gets out from inside of the lifter. But we've already done that previously, so we're ready for installation. So we're here at the lifter well, and before we install our lifters, we're going to see our flat side. That's actually the part that interfaces with our camshaft. And we're gonna take some um, Iski Supercam lube and apply it, might be a little tricky, and apply it to the flat side, just like that. So it's nice and lubricated where it interfaces with our camshaft. And then you can just flat side down, slide her in. And go ahead and do that for all 16. You really can't have enough lubrication, or you can't have too much lubrication, rather. More lube is always better. Perfect, so just do that for the rest of the cylinders. So these are the push rods we are going with today. They are made by Summit Racing, sent over by them, and the link is down below in the description. This is just the stock push rod length. There are a lot of things you can do with push rod lengths. I like to keep it stock just to keep all the geometry nice and simple. So we can go ahead and remove these from their package. Very nice. What we wanna do, and do this for all 16 of them, is grab some carburetor spray and spray it down the tube there and then get some compressed air and blow it through. And you want to do this for all 16 because you don't really know what's inside of this tube. There could be little metal chips from the manufacturing process or really anything you don't know and you really don't want this in the very crucial part of the oiling system of the engine. So now back over here at the engine we're going to take our nice and clean push rod, dip it in some of our best friend Permachex Ultra Slick and we are going to install that into its home. Very cool, we can do the other one as well. Nice little dip there. And install that, making sure they are nice and on top of the cups for the lifters. And we can just wipe away that excess. And then just do that for the rest of them. So now all our push rods are installed. Next, we can install our rocker arms. So this is the hardware that came with our cylinder heads from AFR, and you can see that there is some lettering here on our guide plates. A little tricky to see, but that one says L and that one says R, but the lettering is going to be face down. So basically they're gonna be jointed and face down like this and then secure to the head using these studs like this. So with that in mind, we can head over to the engine. So we're gonna start turning our engine over and we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stare at our exhaust lifter. You can see that it's up a teeny bit and our intake lifter is basically flush. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start turning the engine over. You can see the exhaust valve opening. Now it's beginning to close. Now we're in our overlap phase. And you can see the intake coming up. As it's coming up, coming up. Now it's going back down. And once it's back down, go ahead and give the engine about a quarter turn more. And this means that we can do our adjustments and you have to do this individually for each piston. So don't just set it on this one for number one, for instance, and think you're good to go for the rest of your pistons. You have to do this for each and every single piston but we've done this for number one, so we're gonna continue on that. So now we can move on to showing off our rocker arms because uh, we're ready to you know, line things up and you need the rocker arms to do that. And there is our part number, again, sent over by Summit Racing and the link is down below in the description. And these are pretty cool because they are superior overstock for two ways. They have a roller trunnion here, which is very cool. It's not just a stamped piece of steel and it has a roller bearing on the tip, which is going to make um, the valve train perform better. It's gonna make it uh, rev faster and easier because it's you know, easier for this to work instead of using just you know, friction and stamped steel. So we can 
uh, get these ready for installation. What we can do before we do any kind of prep work is we can just hose them down with some carburetor spray, grab an air hose, just to ensure there's no little metal chips or anything in there. And then what we can do is grab our oil from earlier and just carefully lower that in there. You can see little bubbles coming out of there. We're just gonna let that soak for, I don't know, at least a few minutes. And do that for uh, all 16. So what we're gonna do is with our guide plates with the lettering down, we're just gonna loosely put those there for now. And then we're gonna grab some of this. It is Loctite Thread Sealer with Teflon, link down below in the description. And we're just gonna apply that to our threads. There we go, it's plenty. And then we're just gonna install that. And we don't have to put these down any more than just, you know, finger tight, not even finger tight, just kind of loose actually. We can do that for the other one as well. And what you want to be able to do is kind of move things around a little bit. So, you know, don't have it tight, just have it enough so it's not going to run away on you, but enough, to, but tight enough to where you can uh, adjust things. So we can grab our good friend Permatex Ultra Slip and apply it to our tips here. Oh yeah, perfect. And you can, you can actually go ahead and do that for all of the valves if you want. And then we're going to apply it to our push rods. Oh yeah. Nice and lubricated, that's fantastic. Check that out. So we'll replace our rocker arms, making sure that the round part of the trunnion is facing down to the rocker stud. And then we can put that on, making sure that the push rod goes into its, you know, its cup, its home. Nice and lined up, very cool. And then we can begin putting on our adjuster with our jam nut. So now what we can do is make sure that our roller bearing here is lined up perfectly on the valve stem. You wanna make sure that this is perfectly on it, perfectly perpendicular, and perfectly centered. And this is really important. You wanna make sure that this relationship is always nice and right on the money. And you wanna check this throughout the following procedures of tightening and making sure everything's okay. Always check that this is nice and centered. Just like that, that looks pretty good. So now we're gonna take a Sharpie or a marker and we're gonna fill in this area here to ensure we get everything nice and lined up when we tighten our guide plates down. So this is gonna serve as our reference point. So we're just gonna color in this gap here so we have something to line up on and that looks amazing. So we're good to go. Alrighty, so now what we can do is carefully remove our rockers. Very good, and set those aside for right this moment. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to eyeball as we're tightening these downs, the guide plates to make sure they're lined up with our Sharpie marks there. And we're gonna do this and just, oh, did not move, very good. Didn't move either, very cool. And I'm just gonna give those a little snuggening before we grab our torque spec. Oh, that's perfect. Alrighty, now we have our torque wrench loaded up to 50 foot-pounds. We can snug these bad boys down. There we go. Perfect, and now you can double check and make sure that your guide plate gap is still lined up with your Sharpie marks which ours is spot on, fantastic. I'm gonna take one of our lubed up rocker arms, make sure the trunnion is facing uh, down, the roller part, the round part facing down. Place that on, make sure everything's in its home like that, perfect. We're gonna take our rocker arm adjuster, thread that on with the jam nut out a bit, backed out a little bit. We're gonna put this on, and as it starts getting close, we're gonna take our other hand and start spinning this push rod. Oh yeah, it's spinning nice. So we're gonna keep spinning, left hand tightening with our right. And now I can't spin this any longer. We know this is in its right spot. We can go ahead and grab a 5 8 wrench and just turn it about a quarter turn more. 
And then we're gonna grab our jam nut Allen, which is 13 16 So after we've done that quarter turn, I'm gonna have to hold it with a wrench and we are going to tighten that jam nut. Just hold that in place, make sure that the adjuster, the big part, doesn't go anywhere. We're just gonna tighten that jam nut down. Mm, perfect. Just like that. Excellent. Now we can do the intake. So second verse is the same as the first. And what we're going to do, make sure again, roller part, again, round part of the trunnion facing down towards the rocker stud. Make sure the push rod is in its cup. Very cool. Then we can grab our jam nut adjuster arrangement. Alrighty, let's go ahead and start threading that on. I'm going to start turning my push rod. You can see it turning. Turning, 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 turning. Oh, stop turning. We know we're basically home. Grab our wrench, turn it quarter turn. And then hold the large 5 eighths while we slink this jam nut home. Just hold it in place, make sure it doesn't move. Perfect. So we're running hydraulic lifters, and if you're running a solid lifter application, you'd have to use a feeler gauge underneath uh, the tip here, and you'd have to manual, manually set the lash. But because we have hydraulic, you don't really need to do that. So another tip too is that you want, once you're installed, you know, we're basically um, done with the cylinder, you can push down on it. You have a little bit of player like that, but it doesn't kind of go tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick, or rattles like that. This is. This is perfect. They can push down on the rocker arm and you can see the plunger activating inside the lifter. Check that out. Pretty cool. But if they're full of oil, then it'll be either really hard to push down or it won't push down at all. Eventually that oil will drain out and you'll be able to do this. So the really cool thing about engine building is this one cylinder on the valve train is exactly the same as the other seven. So just do this exact procedure seven more times and your valve train's done. So after our valve train is installed, we can turn the front of the engine over to watch it work. Those little doips, that's what you want to hear. Doip. And this looks absolutely perfect. So that is how to put the valve train together on a 4302 Windsor, or 347 in our case. It is pretty uh, straightforward, and once you get the hang of it, the other cylinders go very, very quickly, and then you have a perfectly functioning valve train on your 302, and it's really something to see all the valves working and kind of going doink, doink. It's really fun to see. It's very rewarding. And honestly, in my opinion, once you have the valve train finished, you're basically on the, on the downside of the work for the engine and the rest of it should go together fairly quickly and easily. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope I've earned your subscription here today. Make sure you check out summitracing.com. Again, been a fantastic sponsor. And I'll see you next time.